Okay, so today we're going to talk about standard deviation. Okay, so the standard deviation describes variation in terms of deviation from the mean. It is one measure of spread. So the standard deviation t will tell you how far or how close your data or, and what percent of your data is close to the mean or are spread apart from the mean. So a small standard deviation indicates that the data points tend to be very close to the mean. So for instance, if I give a test and let's say the mean of the tests come out to be 80 and I have a very small standard deviation, that would be good because that would mean most of my scores are around the mean maybe a little, a little bit above and a little bit below the mean. If, let's say, my, my mean of the scores is um, 80, but my standard deviation is large, okay, this would indicate that my data is spread over a large range. So if, let's say, my, my standard deviation is, uh, my mean is still 80, my standard deviation is large, let's say it's 20 or 30, well, it can't be 30, let's say it's 20, but that would mean that, that a very large percent of my data goes from 100 down to 60. So that, that would not be good. I would want, for, if I'm talking about test scores, I would want my mean to be, let's say, big. Let's say I would want my mean to be 90 with a small standard deviation. I would want my standard deviation to, let's say, say B5. That would mean a majority of my scores would be between 95 and 85. That would be very good. All right, so let's talk about different shapes of data. So the shape of the data here. So let's just take a look at um, the normal one, which is the one in the middle. This is a normal standard deviation, okay? This would be a normal, a normal curve. Okay, notice in the middle, this line here represents the mean, it also represents the median, and it also represents uh, the mode. This is symmetrical, so how it's curved on the left side is how it's curved on the right side. So it's symmetrical. So then we have some other types of curves, and we have a negatively skewed Okay, notice that the curve comes down and it pulls to the left side. This would be called skewed left. Okay, you can remember is that it has a tail on the left. Right, it has this tail that comes over onto the left side. Notice that the mean is not in the middle. My mean is over here because you have this data that's pulling, pulling the data to the left. So for instance, if let's say I have, um, I give a test and mo a lot of kids do pretty good. Let's say a lot of the kids get in the 80s, but then I have like three or four kids. Let's say out of 20 kids, I have 15 kids that get in the 80s. And then I have five kids that get in the 30s. That's going to pull my mean down to the left. So it's going to pull my mean away from the 80s and down probably into the 60s. Okay? So my mo would be here, and that would make sense because I would have a lot of kids that were would be in the 80s. Okay? Okay, so now we have um, to the right over here positively skewed. So notice that the bell curve pulls to the right. Okay, so we would put skewed right. And you can remember this as it has a tail on the right. Okay, it has a tail on the right side. So it would look like this, just keep pulling this way. Notice where the mean is? The mean is to the right. It's being pulled that way. So let's say I give a test and I have a lot of kids. Let's say out of 20 kids, 15 kids get a test grade of, let's say, 70. But then I have five kids that have a test grade of, let's say, in the 90s. It's going to pull the mean up 
and make it higher than where a lot of the kids, the mode where a lot of the kids are around, which would be around in the 70s, it's going to pull it up to the right. Okay, that's a positive direction. This is obviously a negative direction. All right, let's take a look at um, the example down here. I'm just going to pull everything up. Okay, so the histogram below shows the distribution of the greatest drop in feet for 55 major roller coasters in the United States. Okay, so would you describe this distribution of roller coasters maximum drop as approximately symmetrical or skewed? Explain your answer. So look at this. It, it kind of goes like this. So this would be a skew. This would be a skew to the right. Okay, so, and, and what it means is that you have the, a lot of roller coasters here that have maximum drops of 90, 50, 130, 170. And then you have quite a few over here that are, pull, that are very big, big drops. See this big drop here between 410 and 450 feet? That are pull, that's pulling it this way, which means your mean is not in the middle. It's going to be around in here someplace because it's being pulled this way. Okay, there, and there's a lot in here. There's only a couple over here, okay, but there's a lot in here, so it's pulling it this way. So it's skewed to the right because there is data pulling the curve to the right. Okay, and then it says, is the mean of the maximum drop distribution, so I'm looking for the mean, 90, 135, 240. So since it's skewed to the right, it's not the highest point. Okay, it's going to be pulled to the right a little bit. So would it be 90 over here? No, that's too small. Would it be 240, which would be right over in here? No, that, that would be too big. So it must be 135 would be the mean. So the 135 would be about here, which kind of makes sense. Okay, and the last thing says, and that would, this is a, a good for uh, your explanation that this is too small and this is too big. All right, let me just move this up a tiny bit. Okay, now it says, is the standard deviation of the maximum drops distribution, so I'm looking for the standard deviation closer to 40, 70, or 100 hours, explain your answers. Well, look at the, the spread here. The spread is 40, 40, 40. The intervals are all 40. So the answer is it's 40 because the difference between the intervals is 40. Okay, so that's it, and we'll practice more in class tomorrow. Have a good night.